Greetings and welcome to another season of American Heroes Outdoors. The American Heroes Outdoors crew has put together some amazing stories and some awesome adventures to share with you this year. To kick things off, we are embracing the snow and cold and finding ways to enjoy the great outdoors in the dead of winter. First, we head to Park Rapids, Minnesota for Canines and Lines. This event was created by our friends at Mandatory Fun Outdoors with a goal to help get veterans' families outdoors during the coldest days of the year. What better way than dog sledding and ice fishing? Then we head further north to Red Lake where an Ice Castle owners group is using its passion for fish houses to give back to veteran nonprofits in a big way. Mix in a Shields hometown hero and finally we head back to Park Rapids with our friends from Smoky Hills Outdoor Store to highlight an awesome project called the Patriot House Project. After that we head over to the American Legion Fishing Derby and showcase what it's all about. 2020 looks to be our biggest year yet, so join us as we honor our nation's true heroes. Throughout history, brave men and women have answered their nation's call to serve. Heroes who have put their life on the line for each other and our freedoms. These are their stories. American Heroes Outdoors is brought to you by Shields, Disabled American Veterans of Minnesota, Smoky Hills Outdoor Store, Gate City Bank, Skeeter Boats and Yamaha Outboards, Yamaha Power Products, Woodland Resort, S&S Promotional Group, Wheeler's Point Resort, and Ice Castle Fish Houses. Samantha Carlson of Mandatory Fun Outdoors loves being outside. She also loves sharing that passion with others. Recently, she connected the dots and found a way to get military families out on a winter adventure in northern Minnesota. Well, I got a hold of uh, Smoky Hills Outdoor Store in Park Rapids, and I wanted to uh, do a half a day of dog sledding and a half a day fishing. So when I talked to them, they mentioned that they also know of a dog sled team that they sponsor. They're the ones that got me in touch with Two North uh, Dog Sled. And, and as soon as I called them, we just, we just clicked and everything was a go from there. The morning started off crisp and cold, fresh with a dusting of the night's fallen snow. The dogs' yips and barks were chaotic and loud. However, the energy was contagious. I'm excited. I like the dog. <laughs> as soon as we took off, the chaos went to calm. Yeah, it all depends on the dog. Like some of them retire at different ages just because of their body or what they want to do or just their health in general. Uh, the morning uh, was pretty exciting. We, my girls love dogs, and we'd never been dog sledding before, and so I think it was going to be a new experience for all of us. And it was uh, exciting, fresh snow. It was fun. It was like a little like adrenaline rush at first, and it was like ice and snow in my face, and then it ended up just being smooth. It's just like calming to like be away from like all like the commotion, like busyness of like the cities and the towns. It's nice. Like I work at a summer camp over the summer, so it's just. It's just nice to be in that like element again. I've loved dogs since I don't even remember when. And seeing the dogs like get all like wild up to like start going, it was pretty fun. Yeah, so I've never been dog sledding before. Um, and nor, nor is my wife, Katie, um, nor of my kids. And so just a really interesting experience, kind of a cross between like riding a snowmobile and cross country skiing. It's um, just absolutely silent and peaceful as you go through the woods. Um, but at the same time, you have the energy of the dogs that, that's there, you know, pulling you along. So it's just a really interesting mix between a serene North Minnesota uh, winter experience and, and the you know, veracity of the sled dogs just pulling you along. It's a great, great time. 
interesting to see how the dogs work as a team and the amount of training effort that the, uh, the dog sled owners put into that. I mean, I'm sure it's, you know, for us just coming up here and enjoying it for a morning, it was easy, but I'm sure there's a lot more work behind the scenes. We actually had to wake up 5.30 in the morning today to feed the dogs, to make sure that they are fed before we could come and do the run. It's not like a hobby where, like, it's bi like bicycling, you just take up or you just put away your bike. This is a full-on commitment. You gotta feed the dogs morning and night, so it's really a family commitment. I think it's kind of more of a fun thing to do. I'd like to kind of give rides and do that because I kind of enjoy doing that with people, just giving them the opportunity to try dog sledding. Um, I do a lot of racing. I like the racing aspect of it. Something like this allows us to get out and, and, and do something uh, other than, than sit inside. And so uh, we were able to make it work even with little kids. A three-year-old and five-year-old were able to do all of today's events. So uh, I truly believe that anybody can do this um, with just a little, a little preparation planning and then obviously support of the great team. It was a great experience. I would love to do it again. It was so interesting to learn about their lives and being able to share um, dog sledding with them. It's quite a fun experience and it was very exciting. If you're interested in contacting us or getting sled dog rides or just learning about them, you can either find us on Facebook at True North Sled Dogs. Otherwise, Smoky Hill's my sponsor for the last couple of years for racing. They would know how to get a hold of me if you can't get a hold of me on Facebook. I think it went really good. Everybody was smiling, everybody was having fun. Uh, it's something different that nobody had done before, so that was exciting to have new adventures created and something that they'll talk about for the rest of their lives. It's late January and we are on Upper Red Lake with a group of Fish House fanatics that are building a supportive community online and on the ice. A group of people that are giving back to our nation's true heroes in a big way. ICOG is, stands for Ice Castle Owners Group. Uh, how it came to be was November 2014. We were actually on Red Lake fishing. I had a little 8x16 crank down house, you know, all pumped up. Had an issue with it. But there we were on the lake thinking, man, how are we going to troubleshoot this? We don't, you know, none of my buddies had one. I don't know anybody out here. And so he started the page and said, you know, it, it would just be cool to have a community that if you were having a furnace issue at two in the morning or whatever, you could hop on, ask questions um, and say, hey, who's had this issue? You know, you come out on Red Lake when it's negative uh, 20 like it is this weekend and people have issues with propane or generators, that kind of stuff. So just a really good group of guys and gals that share their stories and help each other out. It's not necessarily all about the fishing, but as you can see, I'm always trying. The first year we had about 70 people come up and it was literally just a gathering. Every year it's just kind of expanded and we I don't think we ever dreamed for it to be this big. The camaraderie here and the friends I've made, is it's unbelievable. I mean, I literally tell people that I've got 14,000 friends. I mean, it's that simple. This year we partnered up with Band of Brothers Outdoors. You, what they do for the vets, you know, Recreational therapy and emotional therapy, great deal. So we will be presenting them with a pretty substantial check here this afternoon. We'd like to present you with this check, $32,300. Come back to these guys. That's great. Thank you all. Thank you. I never thought that Banner Brothers Outdoors would, would have such an opportunity where we could come out here with a, a, you know, a group of a thousand people all together for one organization and it's being part of the ice castle owners group family is is pretty important to us and it's probably one of the biggest things that's happened to our organization thank a vet i mean that's in in the big scheme of things this is all about them i mean it's it's about ice castles but it's more about the vets at this point so find a vet thank a vet so Banner brothers is a nonprofit organization that takes veterans currently serving people out hunting and fishing, so outdoor recreational therapy is. Oh, there's fish. Oh, there's a nice one. Ooh, and it's a keeper. That's a pretty fish. Um, it's not just hunting and fishing, it could be camping. Um, we're looking into like doing outdoor survival camping in northern Minnesota, that'd be kind of cool. Seeing the excitement of the groups that we've been able to work with, um, veteran services, it's huge. You know, I think it's so cool what they do, the fact that they're bringing vets out fishing and hunting and on these trips that maybe they would never be able to experience without some of this stuff. It, it just really feels good. It's the proceeds from um, ICOG are going to help us be able to make things easier for people to be able to go out, such as 
um, you know, if we could get an action track wheelchair, you know, to get these guys that are paralyzed out on this uneven terrain, or if it's raining or snowing, you know, that'd be that'd be absolutely wonderful. This group that you know we just joined via kind of social media, more or less, because we owned a fish house, and all of a sudden you realize that how the admins in the group are really support veterans and first responders and how they're helping guys that have PTSD and stuff like that from either their service or action and um, just to see how they support that just because we're all in the same kind of fish house is pretty cool. For all these people to come out here and help support our organization, it really means a lot to us and it shows that there are people out there that want to help us and it's it's kind of one big family and it's it's nice to know that Everybody can get together for a weekend to support one general cause. There are other nonprofits. There are several different sites that people you can go to. It doesn't necessarily have to be just Band of Brothers. Just getting people outdoors is, is the key thing. Just seeing seeing this makes it all worthwhile. It's huge. I encourage anybody with an ice castle to come out to this next year and check it out. It's it's really something to see. I just have to thank our admins, our volunteers everyone who worked so hard to put this on. We could not do it without, without them. Like, Brett and I would go crazy. So thank you so much. Now it's time for the Shields Hometown Hero. Hi, this is Jason Jensen from Shields in Rapid City. We're here to present Pat and Jeff Baird as our next hometown hero. Pat and Jeff, thank you very much for all your, well, your thank service. thank you, wow. I wasn't one of those that always wanted to be in the military. I um, was certainly aware of the military, you know, growing up in San Diego, California, where the Navy is so prominent and my father, my uncles, my cousins, all went in the Navy. I thought, I'll do my part, and I went through the training, and I uh, ended up at Minot, North Dakota, as a tail gunner on a B-52, and then sure enough, the orders came down a month, two months after I'd been there. Off I went to uh, Southeast Asia, Utapau, Thailand, and we were based out of there, but we were in peace talks. We flew training missions over Cambodia, sat alert on Guam all along, I was dating a gal in the Air Force there, Pat. Well, I graduated from Moorhead High, Moorhead, Minnesota, and I didn't really have a career in mind at the time, so I went in the military during the Vietnam War, and um, of course women weren't able to be in combat then, so stuck me behind a desk, and, and after some training in different bases, I ended up at Minot, where I met Jeff. After a couple years of dating, she got orders to uh, Hawaii, off she went and um, three, four months later I got over to Hawaii and we visited and ran around together and proposed and six months later we got married. Three months later I separated from the Air Force at Minot and ended up over in Hawaii. And I finished out my other year in the Air Force and then we moved back to Fargo and got out of the Air Force totally and then we ended up joining the North Dakota Air National Guard out of Fargo. Ending up uh, getting hired with the airlines flying with the airlines and flying with the Air National Guard. Flew F-4s for nine years and F-16s for four years. A lovely career, um, retiring from the Guard, both of us the same day in April of 94, and then uh, retiring um, 15 years later from uh, the airlines and relocating here in the Black Hills of South Dakota. So Jeff and Pat, if you can imagine uh, angels in Air Guard uniforms or angels in, in their civilian life today, they're retired, but their life is this Operation Black Hills Cabin. Pat is the, I'm going to call her the operations manager. Jeff is the finance officer. And we as board members hang on and watch them operate, but their first and foremost mission is Operation Black Hills Cabin, and they, they live for that. They live for the, the testimonials from the families that have come through. And, and Jeff and Pat, this was their dream, and they brought it together, and it's fulfilled 100 plus families today. 
You know, Pat and Jeff have been involved in many things. Um, they were on the search and rescue team for many years. They are also very involved in just supporting whatever it might be going on in the community, whether it's a reception for somebody, whether it's a fundraiser, no matter what it is, they're always big supporters. And in return, they were nominated the Citizens of the Year for Custer one year, which is a is great honor, you know, great honor for this community. It's a, it's a community of 1,800 people. It just shows what great people they are. We thought, you know, there's a lot of people coming back from this war injured, and we felt very blessed that we weren't injured in the war because we both were in during Vietnam and Desert Storm, and, and so we thought, you know, there's a lot of people that come out to this area because it's such a tourist area, and, and maybe we can do something for these families to come out here and enjoy the beautiful Black Hills. And so things just kind of evolved, and it's just become such a community effort, and community involvement and it's just amazing what can happen when a lot of people put in just a little bit each. It's just become a snowballing effect and it gets bigger all the time and there's just a lot of people involved. I believe that there needs to be more than a few main big projects. There needs to be smaller groups like us that want to personally let them know that we appreciate what they did. And again, just a way to say thank you. And that's what Operation Black Hills Cabin is. Keeping with the theme of fish houses, we head down to Park Rapids, Minnesota with our friends from Smoky Hills Outdoor Store to highlight a project giving back to our nation's true heroes and to take part in the American Legion Fishing Derby on Fishhook Lake. We are in Park Rapids, Minnesota on Fishhook Lake, learning a little bit more about the original Patriot House. We're out here with Smoky Hills Outdoors. Let's go inside and chat with Henry a little bit about what this organization is and how you can be involved. So we're sitting in the original Patriot House, which is uh, a dream that Smoky Hills had uh, over many years to be able to put out a house that's available for veterans, service members, law enforcement, EMT, firefighters, to be able to use, you know, it's such a great place to share stories, get together, you know, it's just the a, a, a wonderful sport of ice fishing uh, in Minnesota, North Dakota, a lot of different places. And when we first established this house at Smoky Hills, we said, you know what, this is something that can grow. And we've been really fortunate to have met Dave from American Heroes Outdoors, and he officially launched house number two. The Patriot number two. So right now there's two houses in the arsenal, which is uh, really great to see. And we're hoping that this thing can grow. You know, maybe in another year there's three houses. Maybe someday we'll see ten houses. That is really where we want to be in a couple of years. And uh, we've got some great people working on this project. And I think it can be a reality if everybody kind of comes together to do something great that's bigger than themselves. Welcome to the 21st annual Park Rapids American Legion Fish and Derby. American Heroes Outdoors is out here with Smoky Hills. We have both Patriot houses out here for veterans and service members to come warm up. We're also doing a bunch of giveaways this weekend and sharing some stories and to spread awareness for the Patriot House number one in Detroit Lakes and the Patriot House number two in Park Rapids. This is all about the community. You know, the American Legion turns around and they put this event together and a lot of the proceeds from this goes right back to the community. How can't you be part of it? You gotta take part in the American Legion Derby. Money goes back to the Boy Scouts, all the different organizations in town. It's a huge community event. It's the place to be. So with Smoky Hills and Go Ice Fish, we've always looked for opportunities to, uh, to be involved in the community. And this is just a natural thing for us. Uh, it's close to the store. Uh, it's part of a great cause, the American Legion. I've worked with Jerry, some of the people here, you know, they're all friends and neighbors. And uh, it's just great to be involved in an event where people can come out, have a good time and celebrate being up in the Northwoods. Right on in there, first table. It is 
Oh, it's a great tournament, a great organization, run for a great cause, stuff. Been coming up here for 19 years now. Had pretty good luck fishing, and it's very well organized and very well ran. It's a good, good, good tournament to come to. Well, this is the biggest event for the Legion during the year and stuff. That's where we give our money to charity all year long. It's great for the community. Otherwise, in the wintertime, Park Rapids pretty much, there's not a lot going on. So this is the great, like I say, the great Park Rapids get together. Right to the first computer there. My first fish I've Awesome! You know, everybody wants to give and it's hard to decide where you want to give. Uh, and I feel like this is a, a, a very noble cause. I feel like uh, anytime we have our service members and our veterans involved, it's a worthy cause and we just can't do enough for that. So uh, I feel that that's a good way to start and uh, doing it locally is great as well. Uh, started with the Hubbard County Sheriff's Office right here. Um, the Hubbard County County seat is Park Rapids, and I worked for the jail originally. As a jailer, I worked for two and a half years. After that, I got on boat and water deputy, and then from there to transport deputy. And after that, I was hired by the Park Rapids Police Department full time. Uh, it's really fun because there's people that I've seen around, and other people from my hometown, Nevis. We're having fun out here. We're getting towards the end here of the 21st annual Park Rapids American Legion Fishing Derby. You know, when a community comes together like this, with over a thousand people on the ice, supporting organizations like the American Legion that do some amazing things for our nation's heroes, it's just fun to be a part of. You know, getting in the outdoors, hunting, fishing, and raising money and awareness for a great cause, it's a win-win. It helps the Legion out, know, and that helps oh, everybody out. American Heroes Outdoors is brought to you by Shields. Disabled American Veterans of Minnesota, Smoky Hills Outdoor Store, Gate City Bank, Skeeter Boats and Yamaha Outboards, Yamaha Power Products, Woodland Resort, S&S Promotional Group, Wheeler's Point Resort, and Ice Castle Fish Houses.